For hundreds of years, visitors to Scotland's Loch Ness have sworn that they have seen a monster coming up from the depths. Now the question is, has Nessie come to the United States? The mysterious sea creature was just spotted off the coast of North Carolina, and it's got a lot of people scratching their heads. Amidst the rolling waves, echoing whispers, and the dark depths of the sea emerges a creature of otherworldly origins, the mighty Kraken. As tales of the Kraken resound through the ages, one cannot help but wonder if this mysterious sea monster is a creation of vivid imaginations or a lurking reality beneath the waves. Imagine the thrill of sailors as they traded stories of this aquatic beast by the lantern, sharing their encounters with a colossal creature that defies explanation. What if the turbulent seas held secrets that transcended mere myth? Join us as we unravel the mystery behind a creature that challenges the boundaries between myth and reality. The ocean is home to unimaginable entities that will never cease to tease the imagination of men. Amongst these entities is the mythical Kraken, a foreboding character in many Nordic folklore. Deep in the dark depths of the ocean, where mystery and imagination dance in the shadows, picture a gigantic cephalopod, its lofty tentacles spreading out in the deepest depths on the vast sea floor, marking its territory and maintaining its position as one of the apex horrors of the abysmal ocean. Hundreds of years ago, sailors were terrified by this kraken, a dreadful sea monster capable of sinking ships and with a thirst for human flesh. Today, we know the legends of this monster were based on sightings of giant squids. This animal belongs to the genus Architeuthis and was the subject of many scientific studies. Despite its enormous size, the giant squid is astoundingly elusive and much of its biology remains unknown. Thus, shrouded in mystery, Architeuthis is almost a mythological creature and has a place both in science and in myth. The very last of the legends persist to this day. First classified by Western science in 1857, giant squids, also called Architeuthis ducks, continue to captivate scientists who are actively unraveling their mysteries. The process of naming and classifying a new animal marks just the initial phase. While their reality dispelled the notion of a mythical beast born from people's imaginations, scientists acknowledge that there is much more to discover and understand about giant squids. Inhabiting temperate waters globally, giant squids thrive at depths ranging from 200 to 1,400 meters below the surface. Females are believed to reach lengths of up to 13 meters, while the slightly smaller males attain around 10 meters. Displaying non-selective feeding habits, giant squids hunt fish and crustaceans while also engaging in scavenging. Although scientists have uncovered indications of cannibalism, there is no evidence suggesting that ships are part of their menu. Centuries ago, people came up with many stories about sea monsters. Still, only a few of these legends have lasted until today. Two other sea monsters from Nordic mythology are nearly as ancient as the Kraken, and they are mentioned in the Saga of Orvar Oder, a 13th century Icelandic story written by an anonymous author. These creatures are called Hafgufa, meaning sea mist, and Lingbakr, meaning heatherback. Their behaviors were later detailed in the Norwegian encyclopedia Konung Skugsja, believed to be from around 1250 and also authored anonymously. Similar to the Kraken, these monsters were described as very big, comparable to islands or mountains, and tended to attack ships and their crews. Because of these shared features, these sea monsters are often considered references to the Kraken. They are sometimes treated as the same creature. Bishop Eric Pontopidan, in his work named The Natural History of Norway, portrays the Kraken as the world's largest creature, with a staggering circumference of 2.5 kilometers. Despite the seemingly scientific nature of the book's title, Pontopidan's depiction leans more towards mythology. Describing the Kraken's emergence from the sea, he asserts that its immense size could easily be mistaken for a mountain, making it appear more like an island than a living being. According to Pontopidan, this very massive creature was so vast that an entire regiment of soldiers could conduct battle maneuvers on its surfaced back. He further suggests that the phenomenon of floating islands, commonly reported during that era, might have been encounters with the Kraken. 
These stories and experiences do little to prove the true existence of a creature of immense size and unimaginable characteristics like the Kraken. This video shares the knowledge that ultimately proves the credibility of these creatures and delineates myth from reality. But to understand the scientific evidence that proves the existence of the Kraken, let's dive first into the mythical aspect of the subject to deconstruct and separate the authentic reports from anecdotes. What myths surround the Kraken's existence? Anecdotes, although not true, are a delight to listen to and sometimes hold on to lints of truth that ultimately point research in the direction of clarity. Before we embark on the scientific quest to unveil the truth behind this mythical creature, let's linger a little longer in the captivating domain of mythology and bask in the legendary glory of the Kraken. It's intriguing to note that while Kraken is the go-to name in maritime literature, this sea dweller responds to a variety of other names like Krake, Krabin, Kraxen, Skykraken, and Crabfish. These names aren't just linguistic variations, but they are echoes of ancient tales and maritime folklore, adding a touch of human storytelling to the mystique that shrouds this deep-sea legend. For millennia, sailors have recounted tales of giant squids, the Kraken story began with sailors' tales, but evolved and became stronger over time. In the era of the first navigators, the sea was the sole route to certain destinations. Navigators, facing its treacherous and unstable nature, perceived the depths as harboring a host of lurking monsters. Even the most courageous sailors held a respectful dread for the sea, and their tales gradually transformed into legends. As the saying goes, the tale grows in the telling. Any encounter with an unknown sea creature had the potential to evolve into a myth. For a creature to be worthy of such tales, sheer size alone was insufficient. It had to possess the means to assail a ship and threaten its crew. Originally, the Kraken was part of Nordic mythology and folklore, as mentioned in a manuscript from around 1180 by King Sver of Norway. In this ancient text, the Kraken was just one of several sea monsters. However, it stood out because of its enormous size, described as being as big as an island, and its ability to sink ships. The Kraken was said to lurk in the waters between Norway and Iceland, as well as between Iceland and Greenland. In the first records, it was depicted as an enormous creature measuring several kilometers in length. The legendary Kraken evolved to assume a more modest, molluscan shape. Despite this reduction in size, the scaled-down Kraken still possessed enough magnitude to pose a threat to ships. The recurring theme in Kraken tales revolves around its ability to attack and sink vessels, reflecting the anxieties of sailors. Numerous accounts, spanning from pseudoscientific literature to official naval records, recount encounters with this legendary sea monster. According to reports, the Kraken was believed to engage ships using its formidable tentacles, in the event that this direct approach failed, an alternative tactic involved the creature summoning a powerful maelstrom capable of pulling a vessel to the ocean floor. This particular ability is a recurring theme in Kraken literature, albeit with some variations. Typically, it was described that the Kraken would encircle the ship, suggesting a smaller size for the monster, thus generating a deadly vortex. However, in instances where a larger size was ascribed to the Kraken, it was believed that the mere submersion of the creature could create a vortex, leading to the ship's helpless descent, even if the monster did not originally intend for such a calamity. Certainly, a creature wouldn't earn the title of a monster without a purported appetite for human flesh. Legend has it that the Kraken possessed the ability to consume an entire ship's crew, with some tales going so far as to suggest that the creature could devour the crews of entire fleets simultaneously. Notably, an intriguing piece of folklore surrounding the Kraken includes the belief that the amber found on the North Sea beaches, known as fossilized tree resin, was considered to be the excrement of the monster. Contrary to its intimidating image, the Kraken was believed to have positive effects on people. Sailors held the notion that the monster traveled alongside massive schools of fish, describing how fish would stream down the Kraken's back upon its emergence from the sea. Some accounts suggested that the fish fed on the monster's excrement. In contrast, others proposed that the Kraken emitted an enticing aroma to attract its fish prey. Despite the prevailing fear, certain fishermen set aside their apprehensions and ventured near the creature, 
hoping to secure a more plentiful catch. However, beyond its mythic status, the Kraken has been immortalized in art, especially in the 19th century, with two notable representations warranting special attention. First is Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem titled The Kraken in the mid 1800s a sonnet that blends mythology, drawing strong references to the biblical leviathan and natural history. Second is Jules Verne's novel titled 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in the late 1800s, which features another significant depiction. The creature, referred to simply as Polpe, octopus in the French original, launches an attack on the crew of the Nautilus submarine. Bishop Pontopidan shares an intriguing tale involving the Bishop of Nidros, who mistook the slumbering kraken for an island. The bishop and his crew landed on the creature's back to celebrate a mass, only realizing their error when the mysterious being awakened. This narrative adds a fantastical element to Pontopidan's account of the kraken, blending elements of mythology with what might otherwise be expected from a work with a seemingly scientific focus. These accounts add excitement and charisma to the aura of the sea monster. What scientific evidence supports its real existence? Despite the prevailing myths, scientists were well aware of the existence of the Kraken. Now let's talk about the scientific evidence supporting the existence of the Kraken. In 1853, a large cephalopod washed ashore on a Danish beach, leading Norwegian naturalist Japetus Steenstrup to retrieve its beak. Utilizing this discovery, he scientifically classified the giant squid as Architeuthis dux. This event marked the official integration of a legendary creature into the realm of science, restoring the kraken's image as the creature that sparked the myths. After a century and a half of researching the giant squid found in oceans worldwide, ongoing debates persist regarding whether they constitute a singular species or as many as 20. Similar to certain other squid species, Architeuthis possesses muscular pockets with an ammonium solution less dense than seawater. This buoyancy adaptation enables the creature to float underwater, maintaining stability without constant swimming. The existence of unappetizing ammonium in their muscles is likely a factor preventing giant squids from being extensively fished and nearing extinction. After years of searching without success, giant squids had only been captured in static images. However, in July of last year, scientists achieved a breakthrough by filming the first ever video of a live giant squid navigating the depths of the Pacific Ocean at a depth of 2,000 feet. Edie Witter, the ocean researcher behind the footage, is set to unveil it in an upcoming Discovery Channel documentary scheduled for release later this month. Speaking to Jackie Lydon, host of Weekends on All Things Considered, she mentioned that the elusive creature might have measured up to 30 feet in length. She pointed out that the largest recorded squid reached a length of 55 feet. She recounted her experience capturing the renowned kraken on camera, expressing a long-standing desire to explore the ocean differently. Driven by concerns about the disturbance caused by traditional methods, such as noisy submersibles with bright lights, she sought to develop a stealthy system. Her approach involved creating a stealthy camera and an optical lure designed to imitate a specific type of bioluminescent display that would attract active predators rather than scavengers, avoiding the use of conventional bait. Edie Witter further explained that scientists' awareness of giant squid's existence stems from the fact that they tend to float when they die. However, considering that they have explored only about 5% of the ocean, there's a likelihood that their exploration methods, often disruptive to marine life, may have overlooked creatures that don't float when they die. This made the renowned scientist think of novel ways to give an image of this regularly talked about creature in folklore, thereby affirming its existence in our world today. In an interview, she shared the incredible excitement of being the first to capture the giant kraken on video, acknowledging the satisfaction of achieving something people had pursued for decades. This moment, she noted, encapsulated the essence of what initially sparked her interest in science. For years, scientists deliberated over whether the giant squid resembled the swift and agile predator of legends or operated as an ambush hunter. Finally, a conclusive response emerged through this captured video. The footage of the live Architeuthis demonstrated that it is indeed a swift and potent swimmer, employing its tentacles adeptly to capture prey. 
Despite its impressive size and speed, Architeuthis faces a formidable predator, the sperm whale. Battles between these giants appear frequent, evidenced by scars on whale's skin inflicted by the squid's tentacles and arms, armed with suckers featuring sharp, chitinous, tooth-like structures. However, Architeuthis lacks the muscular capacity in its tentacles for constriction, making it unable to prevail in a confrontation with a sperm whale. Its sole recourse is to flee, utilizing the typical cephalopod ink cloud to cover its escape. Giant squids must keep a watchful eye, particularly their overwhelmingly large one, over their shoulder to guard against sperm whales. These are the only predatory animals large enough to pose a threat to them. Is it safe to say even monsters have their monsters? This might sound like a Halloween tale, but researchers who initially proposed the existence of this ancient sea monster in 2011 assert that they now possess additional evidence supporting their once controversial theory. Not only have they unearthed a second instance of peculiarly arranged bones, but they've also identified a fossil resembling the beak of an ancient squid or octopus. McMenamin and his colleagues made waves when they initially proposed the idea of the Kraken at a GSA meeting in 2011. The basis for their claim rested on an unusual arrangement of vertebrae belonging to the Ichthyosaur Shonosaurus popularis, discovered in Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park in Nevada. Shonosaurus popularis, a marine reptile the size of a school bus with flippers, thrived during the Triassic period approximately 250 million to 200 million years ago. The bones of one such ichthyosaur were found arranged in an unconventional linear pattern. McMenamin and team posited that these bones were positioned by a giant cephalopod, like an octopus or squid, engaging in playful manipulation of its prey. While this hypothesis may not appear excessively far-fetched, there is some grounding in the behavior of modern octopuses, Contemporary cephalopods are known to manipulate bones, shells, and other debris to create middens, effectively concealing the entrances to their dens. These arrangements of bones are considered by some, like McMenamin, as potential early indications of cephalopod intelligence. Nevertheless, the notion has faced considerable criticism. Glenn Storrs, the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Cincinnati Museum Center, expressed skepticism in 2011 characterizing the peculiar bone arrangement as circumstantial evidence and highlighting the need for caution in accepting such interpretations. McMenamin presents additional arguments to support his theory. Firstly, he contends that the configuration of bones is inconsistent with natural processes such as currents or mud compaction. Speaking to a crowded auditorium of geoscientists at the recent meeting, McMenamin emphasized that the shape of the bones makes it highly improbable for currents to have arranged them in that specific configuration, asserting a virtually zero probability. Although now confirmed as more than a legend, the giant squid remains one of the most elusive large animals globally, contributing significantly to its mystique. Many people, even today, are surprised to discover its actual existence. Despite extensive scientific research, the Kraken persists in the popular imagination, fueled by depictions in films, books, and computer games. Occasionally, it even surfaces in unexpected mythologies, as seen in the 1981 and 2010 ancient Greek epic clash of the Titans. These portrayals have shaped the public perception of the giant squid, casting it as a lurking creature amidst sunken ships, awaiting reckless divers. However, extensive research has shown that stories of giant cephalopods dragging sailing vessels into the deep sea seem to be the result of our vivid imaginations. If you're seeking a sea creature capable of taking down a boat, a more realistic choice would be calling upon a pod of orcas. In reality, giant squids rarely stay close to the surface. The surface lacks the necessary oxygen to support it, so if you encounter one drifting near your boat, it's probably facing more significant challenges than you are. Insufficient air supply is just one of the threats to the real-world version of the formidable Kraken. We have come to the end of these compelling tales of the Kraken. Do you still think it is a mythical beast conjured by the human psyche, or do you agree with the scientific evidence that proves its existence? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.